We talk a lot about coupling of coils, especially in crystal radios. And so, for example, I've brought this one out and I said this one's loosely coupled because the antenna circuit, which is here, is not connected to the radio frequency tuning, the channel tuning uh, coil over here. There's actually a break right here. So the antenna comes in here and then goes out through here. And then the uh, earphone and the tuning of the uh, station, it all happens here. On this one, this is more tightly coupled. The antenna comes in here, goes through about the first 20 turns, and then the ground is here. It is coupled to the rest of the tuning uh, coil, so it's more tightly coupled. But what difference does this make when you're building a radio? There's no clear definition of what coupling is. I was hoping to find something that said if you do X, then you get a Y amount of coupling, but there, there's no such thing like that. They talk about in terms of how much magnetic field is shared and all that type of stuff. But uh, let's talk and let's go look and see what happens in an actual demo. First, let's look at our test rig. And what we've got going is over here, we got a signal generator and it is set to 100,000 hertz or 100 kilohertz at 3.3 volts at a sine wave. And we're gonna take this output and we're gonna feed it into this coil. And this is the coil we're gonna to use to couple uh, more tightly and more loosely to our crystal radio. Over here is our crystal radio and we have our oscilloscope connected on one side of the coil here and the other side of the coil here. And the rest of the circuit's not really doing anything right now. And we can see we've got a little bit of background noise going, but otherwise that's it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate this. Uh, we'll zoom in here a little bit, and then we're going to see what happens as we change the position of this coil. And this would normally be our antenna coil, something like that. Uh, or it can actually be also our earphone coil as we change its uh, position relative to our main coil. Okay, let's do that. So got a little closer in here. You can see the scope has some noise on it, which is normal. And let's activate the channel over here and click. There we go. We got some output channels. So now we got more noise from the frequency generator. And what we're going to do is we're going to move our coil. Let me see, make sure I get my hands out of the way. We're going to move our coil closer and we'll see what happens to the wave. Okay, so we are getting about 150 millivolts and it's pretty constant. We're get, still getting a little bit of background noise, but it's fairly constant. You can see when we move it away, it'll get noisier and noisier. And the scope will no longer be able to accurately measure the frequency. As we get it in here, it's pretty pretty darn close. It's like uh, 107, it'll be 100, uh, but yeah, pretty close. And of course, as we move it away more and more, the signal becomes noise. So this is more tightly coupled and this is less tightly coupled. And then we can also change the coupling by rotating this and you can see it will go down and become pretty much all noise. And then we can go back this way and we can go back to getting pretty good signal. Okay, now let's uh, see what happens when we tightly couple these two things together. My prediction is it will be too much. It will kind of blow the signal away. So, okay, so we'll get our standard, try to keep my hand out of the way and big reveal. So yeah, this is the difference between, say, a, a, a wiper, a single wiper radio, and one that has a uh, either, well, varying degrees of coupling on the antenna circuit. So yeah, as you become more and more tightly coupled, you get this effect where it can just absolutely blow the circuit away. Okay, well that was it, just a brief demonstration on loose and tightly coupled and how it affects the signal strength. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your home crystal radio experimentation.